Hey friends, today I'd like to talk about depression, anxiety, and endogenous antioxidants. In particular, there's a formula that's used a lot for depression in Chinese medicine. It's called Xiaoyaosan, or free and easy wanderer. Now this name, it actually comes from a book written a thousand years before this formula was created. And it was written by Zhuangzi, and the first chapter of this is called Free and Easy Wandering. And this is kind of a carefree spirit that the chapter is described at. And Zhuangzi writes about being a butterfly. It says he dreamt he was a butterfly, but then he wasn't sure if he was a butterfly dreaming of being a human. And he describes these really outlandish tales and the main idea is in breaking free of your perspective, because at least personally, for me, if I'm stressed out, that means I'm probably stuck in a certain perspective. And that makes it harder to adapt to life's changes. And when we are having trouble adapting to life's changes, that's when everything just gets a lot harder than it needs to be. So what Zhuangzi was trying to do philosophically was break people out of that so that they wouldn't be trapped by anxiety or depression. Then in the time of the Song Dynasty, around 960 to 1127 in the Common Era, there was a formula which was created at this time. And it was called Xiaoyaosan. It wasn't just created out of thin air. It was based on earlier formulas that were designed to help bring blood circulation to the limbs. So if you've ever been really stressed out, you might get cold hands and feet. And that's because the stress response is trying to bring blood into your organs, into those core organs, like your heart and brain, so that you don't die. It's just a mechanism of shock. And this is similar to say hypothermia. So this formula was used for everything from stress and shock to hypothermia, anything that got blood circulation coming to the interior. You know, it's like being out in the cold can make your hands and feet just feel frigid, right? And also people will say they hear something terrible or they get some stressful news and they'll say that was chilling. Because you're getting the same kind of physiological response, right? You're getting cold hands and feet because your body's trying to protect itself, whether it's from uh, cold exposure or to prevent you from bleeding out. This is the same kind of shock response. So this is what this earlier formula called Sunni San was doing, but it was around this time that they created Xiao San and they named it after Zhuangzi's chapter. And they did that because it gives you this feeling where if you're feeling stressed out and you take some Shia Sun, it allows you at a very physical level to kind of step back and evaluate. You know, it might be like, I must climb this mountain. If I don't, everything is going to be absolutely terrible. Then you take some Shia Sun, you're drinking the Shia Sun, you're like, you know what? I can just go around. I can go through. There are a number of other options that I just wasn't seeing because maybe I was trapped in some kind of mental frame that wasn't that useful. The interesting thing about this formula is that it works heavily through the process of oxidation. And downstream, it'll have effects on regulating dopamine and as an MAO inhibitor and all of that stuff is cool. It helps to uh, lower the level of stress hormones in the body, helps to increase liver's catabolism. All that's great. But its central mechanism that it's working with is actually with inflammation. And this is important because oxidation and especially ROS from nitric oxide are thought to contribute to major depression, anxiety, sleep disorders, and a host of other mental illnesses. So this is why free and easy wanderer perhaps is working. Oxidation, we shouldn't vilify it. Oxidation gets a bad rap. You'll see antioxidants good, oxidation bad, not true. 
oxidation and antioxidation need to maintain a balance, an equilibrium. And it's not a perfect equilibrium. It will be in flux. It needs to change based on cellular cycles, based on time of day, based on um, even stage of life. Your oxidative needs will change. So oxidation is good. Antioxidation is good. They're both bad as well. It's really contextual. But what we do need is our body's endogenous antioxidants to be functional. If they're not, then body just starts to rust. It's like fire and water. You can think of it that way. Not in a literal sense, but in kind of a metaphoric sense. I think of oxidation being fire and this antioxidation being more like water, sort of cooling it down. Even though in a strict sense, oxidation... Well, anyway, it's not the same as burning. So a recurring theme in oxidant signaling and antioxidant defense is NRF2. So NRF2 is really neat because once that's signaled, you get some gene expression of NRF2, it allows this cascade of endogenous antioxidants to start being produced in the body that can really help. So you might see some supplement and it's like, this will increase superoxide dismutase. That's good. That's still upstream of other antioxidants, but this is really upstream of those antioxidants. And you really want to hit that first domino because it's like key regulator of the cellular antioxidant response. So this is where Xiaoyao-san and NRF2 come together. Depression has been linked with chronic inflammation, oxidation, and there have been investigations into NRF2 as stress seems to interfere with it. So it makes sense. Stress is increased, not just increasing inflammation, it's preventing your body from producing its own antioxidants. In a study, they found the herbal mixture of Xiaosan reduced both exogenous and endogenous ROS, and this is important because your body produces the oxidation, but you can also get it from environmental toxicants. If you're in heavy traffic, maybe the guy cuts you off, you think oh, that guy's a jerk, but also you're inhaling environmental oxidants by way of the exhaust coming out of his car. That's affecting the aerobiome. That is the relationship between the air you're breathing, the air which permeates you, and the bacteria. This is having really a twofold effect, both direct and indirect through this process. So NRF2 is very important. And this is being investigated by drug makers as a potential treatment for depression. Interestingly, Shayasan has been used for depression for the last 2000 years and its base formula for longer than that. And Curiously enough, it seems to work through a similar mechanism. In one study on plasma metabolomics of depressed patients with the treatment of Xiaosan or free and easy wanderer, they used the mass spectrometry technique. So metabolomics studies what metabolites have been active. And this can be from human cells or from uh, non-human, but also part of you, microbiota. And the metabolites are what they leave behind, the evidence of their metabolism. It's kind of like if you want to find a bear in the woods, the first thing to look for is bear poop. You find bear poop, you find a lot of it, you may find a lot of bears, or maybe just one very active bear who's doing a lot of cardio, eating a lot, just producing a lot. And that's what metabolomics seeks to look at. It's great because you can see what's actually going on there. So what they were looking at were, first of all, could they look at biomarkers to find how Xiaosan was working? And the second thing they wanted to look for were if there were biomarkers which they could look at to predictably diagnose depression rather than saying, oh, how are you feeling? Because some people, you ask them, how are they feeling? They ask themselves, how are they feeling? Uh, you know, same, same, I'm fine. But if there are biomarkers where you can objectively say, oh, you know, in spite of what you're saying, there are clear markers of depression here, then that can help a lot of people 
who go undiagnosed with depression and then can lead to suicide or other problems. Um, being in that state of inflammation long term is actively decaying the brain, just like having a bad toothache can cause other forms of tooth decay because of that inflammation. Having undiagnosed depression is very serious, not just for the depression, but for the entire neurologic system. It's going to increase pain signaling. It's going to have a host of other problems because inflammation is kind of the grand mediator in the body. The balancing act itself gets off, and then all of these metabolic processes fall with it. What they found were what they found was that Xiaoyao San was able to uh, demonstrate that it had abilities to affect these biomarkers and that these biomarkers should definitely be investigated further um, for use outside of Chinese medicine or just for diagnosis. So all of that seems very, very nifty to me. Now, with all of this, I want to make it very clear that I am not saying if you take Shiaosan, it will fix depression. It's also important to know that Shiaosan isn't just for depression. I've used it easily on over a thousand patients for menstrual problems, for physical pain, fibromyalgia, all kinds of different manifestations. But it's important to remember that Shiaosan, even though it's a very beautifully balanced formula and it seems to have biphasic effects in many cases, it's not going to be good for everybody. And this is where you really want to talk to an acupuncturist, an herbalist. You want to make sure that that formula is good for you. In the meantime, simply look at your tongue. And if it's really red or you see signs of inflammation, consider just for home use, just as a, as a folk remedy kind of way to approach it, and this is not medical advice, but if you're in a state of inflammation, you may look at dropping that and see if you feel a little better about life. Um, your physiology and your mental states are completely linked together. So the way you're approaching life in terms of your mental frame, you may be able to snap out of it best by reading Zhuang Si's Xiaoya chapter. It may come through meditation. It may come through a uh, philosophical change. However, sometimes to snap out of that, it may be really useful to look at physiological changes. And you can do that through exercise, through the way you're breathing, through Tai Chi, Qigong, yoga. You can do that through acupuncture. And yes, you can do that through herbs. And Shia Sun may be one of those formulas that's suitable for you. Thank you so much for listening to the Botanical Biohacking Podcast. I hope your rest of your day and the rest of your year and the rest of your life is just Xiaoyao. It's free and easy, and you're able to adjust well to all of life's changes and live a life <laughs> of grace. Also live a life of grace. That tends to come with relaxation, going with the flow. And yeah, that's it. Have a great day.